A very, very good morning to you. You are watching Y254, and this is Why in the Morning, your favorite breakfast show. As you know, it is Monday, and it's about that time we delve into youth and politics, and we talk about governance in this country, and not only within our borders, but also across our borders. Now, last week, we did discuss the African democracies, and we weren't able to touch on a few issues when we did come to the Kenyan chapter. My name is Hilda Wadidi, and if you do want to slide into our DM, it's our Y254 channel on Twitter. The hashtag is Why in the Morning, hashtag youth and politics. If you like to be more specific, on Facebook we're at Y254, on Instagram Y254 underscore channel, and on DSTV channel 376, on Signet H24 star 1054, Karibuni Sana. Today with me in studio we do have a very special guest. Today we have represented all of you watching us or from wherever you're watching us from today. You're well represented today. You're going to be able to follow up with a conversation. So it's about time I introduce the two gentlemen next to me and the young people in the studio with me because we're about to have a very interesting interesting conversation when it comes to the merits and demerits of the handshake because you are able to touch about the political tension usually during the time that we have our elections. So yes, let's go right ahead. Santi Sana for coming, Wakili Oche, Lawrence Vasili. Yes, please say good morning to the people for the very first time. Good morning, uh, Y254 family. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, uh, a nice uh, opportunity again to discuss uh, this very noble uh, uh, idea of the handshake. Mm -hmm. And I hope you're going to engage and uh, have a very splendid discussion. Thank you. Great. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lawrence Musili, as you have right, rightfully heard. I'm from Horizon Sign Language Training Center. And I'm also a member of the ACDEC, African Charter for Democracy, Elections and Government in Kenya. Thank you. Great. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kevin Chege from the Catholic of Eastern Africa. Mm -hmm. Good morning. My name is Dear Gracious. I'm a strategy and business development practitioner and uh, a member of the African Charter on Democracy, Elections and Good Governance, Kenyan chapter. Good morning, my name is Bukimburu. I'm a governance and development professional and I'm also a member of APDEC. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Daniel Bogonko. I'm a leader from the constituency and the chair of uh, university students mm -hmm. and uh, currently a student at Dedan Kimadi University. Thank you. Uh, Karibu. Um, good morning, mm -hmm. my name is Caroline Omboibugwa. I'm the deputy president of the Kenya. Wow, great. Good morning. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, Sandy Eric, and uh, currently I'm, I'm into matters uh, politics and uh, governance. Mm -hmm. And also I am doing my master's at Kenya School of Government mm -hmm. in public admin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joyce Njeri Nari. I'm the Legal and Constitutional Affairs Director for Ethiopia, Kenya. Oh, yes, Karibuni Sana. Thank you guys so much for coming and for making time for us this morning. So, yes, let's talk about the handshake. Usually, when we have our elections in our country, there's usually a lot of tension, a lot of division. So, we'd like to hear what are some of the merits and demerits of this particular handshake? What can you say so far? It has been helpful in doing what, and it has not helped us in doing what. When it comes to demerits, there's uh, an issue of opposition. We don't have an opposition anymore, apparently. So let's hear from you, Wakili Chen. What do you have to say about this before we hear from Lawrence? Okay, fine. Uh, first, let me be uh, open and categorical that the issue that uh, the handshake has crippled the opposition mm -hmm. is a fallacy. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the opposition uh, party, the ODM party, mm -hmm. is still very uh, enthusiastic in its agenda of uh, keeping the check on uh, the current government, mm -hmm. the Jubilee government. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the razzmatazz that we are hearing about uh, the opposition being crippled mm -hmm. by the handshake mm -hmm. is a fallacy. Mm -hmm. And that um, uh, going forward, uh, uh, we have to really look at the merits of the handshake vis-a-vis mm -hmm. uh, -vis, uh, the political tensions that we have had mm -hmm. uh, post-2017 elections. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, look at our country uh, in that direction. That do we have to have political tensions mm -hmm. after every election hearing period, mm -hmm. or do we have to uh, look at a way of how we can harness our political uh, 
uh, uh, direction so that we can have uh, a future of uh, political um, uh, peace mm -hmm. after elections. Mm -hmm. And that uh, the handshake has achieved more mm -hmm. uh, than we expected. Mm -hmm. That currently we can uh, say that uh, we can say with audacity that the country is peaceful. We can do business peacefully. Mm -hmm. There are no uh, there are no demonstrations. Mm -hmm. You know you you know uh, you remember what political demonstrations mm -hmm. could cost our country. Mm -hmm. Like we can lose uh, multi millions mm -hmm. in a in in a day mm -hmm. when the political uh, uh, tensions mm -hmm. uh, uh, broke in our country. Mm -hmm that if we cannot do business mm -hmm. with peace mm -hmm. then we are losing a lot of money mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, our economy then uh, does not do well mm -hmm. so i'm saying that uh, we must uh, appreciate mm -hmm. that the handshake has achieved more mm -hmm. than we expected okay yeah. okay let's hear from lawrence before we slide over on this other side you can be thinking about it okay of first and foremost, I'd like to say that the handshake has immense benefit to this country because when Raila and Uhuru were not working together, all of us knew what happened. Problems erupted, we had a lot of demonstrations. No, there were a lot of breakages and damages in this country. You see, you will see the Luo people demonstrating, another community demonstrating, and then demo the business will fail. But we see, using the handshake, there is peace. Development has been harnessed. However, the handshake also has some negativity, which I, I cite. Because when Raila was in opposition, we all know very well that Raila, whenever he saw incidences of corruption in any government institute, Raila would also always whis blow the whistle, but currently that Raila is working with the president, corruption is still happening, untamed, and Raila is, style is silent, his mom, he can't say anything about it, because it appears he's dining with the government right now. He can't, he cannot open the mega incidences of corruption in the government. So me, I feel that despite the handshake, Raila should still go back the opposition so that he continues to guide us from the opposition side because we die we daily need Raila more in opposition as opposed to in the government okay do you agree with Lawrence when it comes to that no I can you achieve can you please give the young people an opportunity to say something thank you dear gracious if you can say something please thank you um first just just to take ourselves a step back um I'm here to like represent African Charter on Democracy, yes. Elections and Governance. Mm -hmm. And there is a chapter 23, actually, actually chapter 8, mm -hmm. article 23 of the African Charter on Democracy, Elections and Governance, mm -hmm. speaks about unconstitutional, uh, you know, change of government. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the tension we were in as Kenyans mm -hmm. after, you know, an electioneering period that went beyond six months, mm -hmm. you know, from as early as July, actually earlier than that 2017 to as late as you know january mm -hmm. when we had even then um, you know the famous swearing in of raila mm -hmm. i feel like we were in a very tense situation mm -hmm. that the handshake was you know was the only solution at that time mm -hmm. and to just pick from the conversation here mm -hmm. we cannot every time be assuming that over 40 percent of people who vote the other side that does not win mm -hmm are not part of you know Kenya mm. and so I feel like what are the what are some of the key lessons we can learn from the handshake mm -hmm. number one from me is um, what if we started thinking about quote unquote let's work together mm -hmm. as opposed to saying I am the winner I run with everything you and you you know you have to accept mm -hmm. that's my first point mm -hmm. however just to agree with Lawrence mm -hmm. there's a point of um, you know the demerit aspect of there was no public participation mm -hmm. And how I feel about it is having learned, as the lawyer says, um, that there are benefits to the, you know, the handshake. Mm -hmm. Can we have a point of institutionalization of such a process? Mm -hmm. So that then there is a direct, you know, defined process of post-election agreements, mm -hmm. post-election corporations. Mm -hmm. So that then we can actually see who then, you know, becomes the opposition mm -hmm. and who joins the government. So that business goes on as mm -hmm. usual. Mm -hmm. Nobody feels like they are left out of the government mm -hmm. just because they voted the other side. 
and Great. we cannot overlook her. All right. Yeah. Now we can. Now we can. Okay. Okay. I'll start by saying that it's always wise to fight a common war for last win. So yeah. when Raila and Huru joined hearts for mm -hmm. the handshake, mm -hmm. it was a wise decision, though we don't know what they planned behind the curtains. Mm -hmm. So they must tell us what they planned behind the curtains for us to join them in this common war of fighting craft and moving our country forward. Great. Now. Um. I think I, I sort of agree with my colleague here, Dio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my problem is not the handshake. Mm -hmm. My problem is what led to the handshake. And mm -hmm. because young people were rallied around, mm -hmm. you know, uh, free and fair elections, you know, demanding for free and fair elections. Mm -hmm. But we were not involved. Mm -hmm. the, like, you know, like the 2007 elections, there was the, the peace accord and everything. Mm -hmm. But how did we that, as in wake up one night and, you know, there's, you know, peace accord, I mean, the handshake. Mm -hmm. So my problem is that the, the, the formation of the handshake is a problem. Mm -hmm. But the handshake was there. It's important that we had it because then we had peaceful elections. We had, I mean, we had peaceful um, coexistence within the country mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just to en encourage business environment. Mm -hmm. um, but also moving forward is how do we then institutionalize some of these um, engagements so that even w in future when mm -hmm. we have any disagreement any unfair elections, even not just national, but also in the county, how mm -hmm. do we then um, move from the electoral pe period to also moving towards, you know, that transition, that transition has to be um, institutionalized so that even the, the people of this country can be able to know this is where we are at and this is what we need to do mm -hmm. so that we can be able to facilitate the process. Asante Makileche, Gisim, you want to respond? Yeah. Now, uh, I like uh, the ideas that have been raised by Diocletius. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that uh, Dogracious is a representation of uh, 40, more than 40 million Kenyans who want to see peace after every election mm -hmm. and that would like to have uh, this idea of the handshake mm -hmm. uh, institutionalized. Mm -hmm. So how then do we get to institutionalization of the handshake? Mm -hmm. That is why we are talking about uh, the referendum. Mm -hmm question. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my friend has alluded to it uh, uh, that uh, we were really not informed mm -hmm. of the, 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 the brass tacks mm -hmm. of the handshake mm -hmm. and that what it really uh, discussed and what it really engaged in because it was a, a handshake of two presidential candidates mm -hmm. who were after the election sworn in. Mm -hmm. uh, Uru was sworn in and Raila was sworn in. Mm -hmm. So then they came together mm -hmm. and had a handshake. But then mm -hmm. they did not tell the country what are uh, the nitty gritties mm -hmm. that we have agreed on mm -hmm. in the handshake. Mm -hmm. Then after that is why we have the Building Bridges Initiative, mm -hmm. the BBI. Yes. That the BBI is supposed to move into every corner of this country, mm -hmm. talk to people, mm -hmm. engage in public participation, mm -hmm. and come to us as citizens and tell us this is what the people want. This is the idea. Actually, actually, I'd like to stop you there. There were, com there were complaints about the BBI that you've just mentioned, that young people were not uh, uh, represented when it came to some of those initiatives that were done during that time. Were you guys involved? Were you involved when it came to the Building Bridges Initiative? So the Youth Senate Kenya is right to say that you were not involved. OK, but what, can, what are some of the contributions that you can make? Yeah. Now that we were not involved in the BBI, mm -hmm. as youths as, as the, the, the leaders of uh, the current situation, mm -hmm. we can take that initiative of publishing this thing that uh, we should be knowing about the presidential handshake and, uh, handshake and other things that are happening. Mm -hmm. People should be knowing them all over the country mm -hmm. so that whenever anyone is making a a, a decision on mm -hmm. something to do, mm -hmm. or rather one or two, mm -hmm. he is aware of what is behind everything. Mm -hmm. Not that s some people go talk and then mm -hmm. come on board and tell us, no, now this is what we are going to do. Mm -hmm. And then we remain with the questions in mind. Now, what if this and this comes? Mm -hmm. What if this and this? Still the tension mm -hmm. is going to be there mm -hmm. As, as, as well mm -hmm. if the handshake was not to be there. Mm -hmm. Though the, 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 the tension is going to be rather reduced in a way, mm -hmm. but it will not, not end from the minds of us, the, 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 the common monange. Okay, great. 
Let me hear from the guys at the back now. <coughs> Just to add on to what he has said, mm -hmm. uh, as young people mm -hmm. can take part in the building bridges mm -hmm. by sensitizing. Mm -hmm. By sensitizing, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we are, we, I believe you're the most energetic people mm -hmm. in the country. So but far. we only use it during elections to fight. <laughs> anyway. So <laughs> we can chip in by probably coming up with banners. You know, if I just, okay, if I'm to communicate something right now mm -hmm. as a young person, people mm -hmm. will take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Like, we have WhatsApp groups, you can sensitize people, you can come up with campaigns, mm -hmm. you can come up with what are these things called questionnaires, mm -hmm. you ask people what they feel, and all that. Mm -hmm. So I feel we should, we have more to give, we have a lot of things to give, mm -hmm. yes. We have a lot to give. And also, mm -hmm. to add on to something, mm -hmm. about I hear people talking about the m merits that have been brought about by the handshake, yes. but at some point, I feel there's a demerit. Mm -hmm. By this I mean, you know, uh, we had the people's president. Mm -hmm. This people's president mm -hmm. was to help our young people mm -hmm. acquire employment. Mm -hmm. People had hope. I even remember guys oh, being told, <laughs> guys being told <laughs> you should not go mm -hmm. to work, you should go demonstrate and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. So by the handshake, mm -hmm. It sort of disadvantaged some people because mm -hmm. some people really invested. People never used to go to work. Mm -hmm. You're told not to refrain oh, from yes, buying the this. We were told to, to, to not use certain products. Well. Yeah, then you refrain. So, as much as the handshake was <laughs> there, <laughs> fine, it's a good <laughs> thing. But I still believe mm -hmm. you remain in the opposition because mm -hmm. things are not the way he promised us. Yes. Eh, Lawrence, it appears today you do have an army. Uh huh. Thank you so much. And if I were to also add uh, something here, mm -hmm. I would say that uh, first the genesis of, of the handshake, mm -hmm. it, it was a political issue. Mm -hmm. And we know that the very nature of politics in Kenya mm -hmm. is, you know, like uh, uh, Churchill would uh, say that it is like a riddle mm -hmm. which is wrapped in a, a, a mystery mm -hmm. that is actually inside an enigma. Literature to say, today has come through. Okay. <laughs> that is to say that the very nature of mm -hmm. politics mm -hmm. in Kenya, mm -hmm. it is in a way that it it uh, it has pushed mm -hmm. uh, and particularly the youth mm -hmm. to a uh, uh, cocoon mm -hmm. that they cannot uh, understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, saying that, I mean that uh, it is even odious to even think that uh, the leaders who are involved in the deal uh, had the public interest mm -hmm. uh, at hand. Mm -hmm. The way uh, politics is actually done mm -hmm. in this uh, nation mm -hmm. it is obnoxious mm -hmm. to even try and uh, suggest that the leaders of this nation has uh, the the interest of the public at hand mm -hmm. but having having said that mm -hmm. uh, I want to answer my uh, colleague brother, yes Lawrence uh, yes that uh, it is not about one Raila Amolo Dinga. Mm -hmm. The opposition in the country mm -hmm. does not have to depend on one person. person yes. it, the opposition has to be institutionalized mm -hmm. so that in the event that even that opposition leader mm -hmm. is incorporated mm -hmm. in the government, government mm -hmm. then we still have a strong opposition to keep the government in check. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right, let us you seem to have, you want some you want to say something? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. I strongly feel the opposition working with the government, the government will not deliver. If the opposition is aside from the government, then incidences of corruption which may happen, then in in case anything wrong can be done, then they can shout and heckle the government for the government to change, to stop that corruption. But right now, from the, from the time the, we had the handshake, 
I've never seen Raila or any person you know, talking about the government and issues of corruption. Mm -hmm. So we don't know right now why everything like this things are mum. But you see, as a country, we need a strong opposition. But we all know very well that Raila is the opposition leader of this country. <laughs> we don't have any other opposition leader in this country mm -hmm. better than Raila Odinga. Hey. What about inclusivity and the youth? What happens to us? Makilio Cheng, please, can you respond? Now, uh, President Obama, sometime in his speech mm -hmm. in the U.S., said that uh, we cannot use uh, 19th century bureaucracy to fight the challenges of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. If we have had hard stance politics of opposition mm -hmm. since 1963, mm -hmm. uh, actually since 1966 when uh, Jaramogi Odinga broke uh, ways with uh, Johnston Kamau Ngengi, mm -hmm. and we have had that hard, hard stance politics of opposition mm -hmm. till 2017, mm -hmm. and it has not both roots, we can no longer, we can no longer use that uh, bureaucracy to fight the 21st century challenges. And I then uh, get to the idea mm -hmm. that Raila Odinga, in his uh, view to shake hands with President Uhuru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. was uh, a good idea. Mm -hmm. Because uh, sometimes we are told that if you cannot beat them, you join them for a good purpose. Speaking of and, beating and them and joining them, and we had... Wait. Let me just finish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that uh, going forward, mm -hmm. we have to institutionalize uh, this <coughs> into mm -hmm. the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are saying that we should not have elections mm -hmm. where we have a winner mm -hmm. take all scenario. Mm -hmm. That let's have a parliamentarianism, mm -hmm. a parliamentary system of government. Mm -hmm. Where we have the leader of opposition in, gov in, uh, in, uh, in, in parliament, mm -hmm. we have the president in parliament, mm -hmm. we have parliamentary oversight of the executive in parliament. Mm -hmm. So that we don't have the executive outside parliament. People who, cannot, who can be summoned to parliament to answer to audit queries, to answer to questions of, of, uh, of uh, uh, misuse That's and embezzlement of government. Mm -hmm. Let's have these members of parliament be part of the executive in parliament so we can easily question them mm -hmm. that is what we are we are we are talking about that is why we are saying let's have inclusivity in government the incipient intention of the handshake was for cohesion and national unity okay i uh, from what so i'm hearing from you like so no, 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 no. part of government can we please can we please wall up wall up there i yeah. can see a lot of pro-referendum talk so where does that leave us when it comes to the young people the people who are living with disabilities but they want as it to well be institutionalized mm -hmm. now yeah. we'd like to hear those so the, according to the referendum or critics of the referendum is mm -hmm. that um it, it only creates uh, positions of leadership for people who are up there but when it comes to the rest of us down there everything else is lost in implementation so can we here because today when they are represented can we hear from you what more can we do for the people who are living how well are they represented when in, when it comes to leadership thank you yes please say something yes yes please in the first place mm -hmm. i think that the, the the handshake was that promote peace right mm. and cohesion mm -hmm. but i think you cannot mend one place mm -hmm. and destroy the other place mm -hmm. Because after the handshake, it left us with, you know, the the, the, the leading party was was, was divide, divided into two. Mm -hmm. The opposition was also, like, divided. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, it did not promote peace as it was supposed to promote. Well, at the end of the day, it ended up dividing us even more. Yes. Great. Can we hear from... Yeah. Just hold on one minute. Can we hear from Dio Gracious? Then we'll go uh, back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to pick from her point. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding... Mm -hmm. The handshake happened at a high level. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there were more than 10 people. That's just my thought that <laughs> understood what was happening <laughs> uh -huh. as per the responses of the key politicians mm -hmm. before it was publicized. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, one, um, I agree that mm -hmm. in as much as there is no uh, participation and engagement mm -hmm. of like everyone else, including the lieutenants of these political sides, including mm -hmm. like the lowest of the people, but most importantly the youth, mm -hmm. then we'll always have opposition. Mm -hmm. Because you can't just, you know, discuss things 
and then bring us you know what has been cooked and is ready on the mm, table mm. through the tv and the media and you mm. expect that we're just gonna buy it yes. so i feel like in as much as the handshake may have not you know included or engaged everyone mm -hmm. If you're talking about the BBI and the referendum and everything, I feel like yeah. this is the, op the, the opportunity for the young people to come up mm -hmm. and push for their position and yeah. their, you know, yeah. their active engagement in this. Otherwise, when we also continue debating and let it go, mm -hmm. we will always remain on the periphery. That's True. not going to help us. All right. I like the fact that now we can hear what you have to say. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I am very much glad that the issue of persons with disabilities has been uh, uh, actually raised. Mm -hmm. And it is very uh, uh, disappointing mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the very much that goes on, the persons with disabilities are always sidelined. Mm. And I say this vehemently. And I think the, the elephant in the house is that uh, we always beat around the bush but we know that the elephant in the house is the leadership mm -hmm. that w if we find the the right leadership in this country then i am very much sure that every e everything else w will follow mm -hmm. the issue of uh, plebiscite mm -hmm. is that it it must be informed by the national issues at hand but now, who decides the national question that is at, is at hand? As of the moment, we only have a very few people. And, and this is the very question that is addressed to the, the whole issue of the handshake, that who are those that are involved in and who are those that are left out? Because if at all, it is a national conversation. Then uh, it should not be uh, uh, prejudged to, uh, like, in a way, conclude that the the issue ailing the nation must be addressed through a, a plebiscite, because the persons that now uh, come out now to frame the question and. Mostly this is done by the uh, political elite. And they, they normally uh, do it in a way that uh, promotes their own political gain. Mm -hmm. And this is where we are going wrong, wrong. The question must be framed in a way that it addresses the national question that uh, so, so what can we do about it? Like now that we have, we have discussed and we have agreed that they, they are the ones who made the decision and we, and we were left out, they did create a fifth uh, uh, rule about a fifth of the people living with disabilities being represented, but it got lost in, in implementation. So what do we do when it gets lost in implementation? Because I remember our Chief Justice uh, Willy Mutunga said that the only true opposition we have in this country is the youth. So I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear from Lawrence, please, before we move away from that topic, I'd like to hear what you have to say, and then Buki, you can go ahead, yeah? Great. Okay, all right, fine. Personally, I am a person with disability, but uh, I will not lie that I understand very well issues to do with persons with disabilities, but what I do know, Currently, persons with disabilities are well represented wow. in the current dis dispensation. For instance, we have an MP with the name David Olesankok. I hope you know him. He's a person with disability. So all along, he has been working with the National Council for Persons with Disabilities. So he has also represented us in Parliament right now. Wow. We also have Senator Mwaura, Isaac Mwaura. Mm -hmm. He's a senator, he's a person with disability as well. So, if we have those two people, I think we are well represented. We also have another lady by the name, Denita Gatti, Honorable Denita Gatti. We also have Dr. Gertrude Musuruve. So, all those are persons with disability representing us. But for now, what I can say is that persons with disability are well represented but for the deaf specifically we really need to do more 
to assist the deaf people as part of persons with disability yes but what, it is good for us if we can have maybe one deaf person is an MP or maybe a, who sits in the Senate who understands issues to do with persons who are deaf who can represent us either in the Senate or the Parliament because those nominated MPs all along have never been engaging more with deaf persons. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are they just representing other persons with physical disabilities? Because they understand those other categories better, but they don't understand us because they're not in our shoes. So if we could have had one of our own seated there, then we could feel as deaf persons that we are well represented. So Lawrence, are you going to buy a CAM 2022? <laughs> Oh yes, I'm very, very serious about it. I'm <laughs> intending to buy in the year 2022. Mm -hmm. But for now, I want, I'm not yet made my final decision which seat I will intend to contend for. I've not yet decided, but very, very soon I will decide. I'm sure one day I must represent persons with disabilities, either in Parliament or in the Senate. Wow, and we wish you the best of luck with that. But I'm glad to hear that you do feel represented somewhere. So Mbuki, can we hear from you? Um, I would say I support the idea of youth for BBI, even though we are not involved in the handshake. <laughs> However, um, the fact they say if you're not on the table, you're on the meal. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've engaged in policy work before, mm -hmm. and once they are doing the policy work and you're not there to question and to you know push your agenda forward, then you'll be left out. So young people, we have organized ourselves, youth having organization. You know, we have come up with draft communicate to you know submit to the uh, BBI, but we are not sure how much that will be captured in the final uh, document and in, even the fair referendum and mm -hmm. all these things. Mm -hmm. So as much as we have not been on the table, we had we are trying ourselves to be in uh, in the table. But for me, I would say as much as youth, we are the of the we are the opposition. We mm -hmm. need to disrupt. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even this formal communicates, do memorandum, mm -hmm. lobbying the parliament. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it doesn't work, and it's for yes for us young people mm -hmm. to um, look back and see what other strategies do we have, mm -hmm. uh, other creative ways do we have, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to disrupt as as my friend was saying the wakili was saying <laughs> we need to you know move out from the 19th century engagement to 21st century so that mm -hmm. we can be able to rally ourselves behind to be able to influence policy work and um, the deci decisions that are made in this country great work in your check now can you respond yeah now my sister at the back mm -hmm. uh, was talking about the handshake has having been uh, having brought more divisions mm -hmm. and uh, in the ruling party. Yes, as a demand. I think she, she was talking about Kialeweke and Tanga Tanga. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, Kialeweke and Tanga Tanga. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, is, uh, is politics about 2022. Mm. Because when you see them, uh, wherever they go, when you see Tanga Tanga Brigade uh, in, uh, in, uh, in wherever they are, when you see Kialeweke Bandwagon in wherever they are, they are talking about 2022. Mm -hmm. But President Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga were very specific that they are not uh, going to be engaged in 2022 politics. Mm -hmm. They want to have a peaceful, coexistent country where the Big Four agenda can be achieved. Mm -hmm. And the Big Four agenda, we are talking about manufacturing, mm -hmm. we are talking about housing, mm -hmm. we are talking about health, we are talking about things that are touching the common monanchi. Mm -hmm. So if people think in the Jubilee administration that uh, they have been divided and there are very few people mm -hmm. uh, that uh, are fighting for their personal interest mm -hmm. because look at them mm -hmm. uh, wherever they are they are talking about uh, the DP in 2022 mm -hmm. these are people who are looking at their personal interest in 2022 mm -hmm. maybe they have lost touch with the people in the ground mm -hmm. they have lost touch with the electorate mm -hmm. they are looking at how Electoral fraud in 2022, perpetuated by their leader, mm -hmm. can get them into the seat. Mm -hmm. So I think these are people we should not uh, be talking about. Mm -hmm. Can we? These are people that are trying to divert our attention from the common goal. Mm -hmm. What we must discuss, mm -hmm. and especially as the youth, mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. is how we are going to be involved in the Building Bridges Initiative, mm -hmm. how we are going to uh, 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 provide our our issues, how we are going to put forward 
mm -hmm. our agenda mm -hmm. in this Building Bridges Initiative. Mm -hmm. And the Building Bridges Initiative is moving across the country. Mm -hmm. There's no way they are not going to. Mm -hmm. And we must then put our, our, ourselves in the forefront as mm -hmm. the youth. Because, mm -hmm. because the, uh, this referendum question, as I had told Actually, you before, mm -hmm. the referendum question mm -hmm. is more focused on the, on the future generation. Mm -hmm. And the future generation is us, the youth. Mm -hmm. So we must really be vehement and, and, and uh, very uh, strong mm -hmm. in, in this. All right. And okay. the youth should not be, should not mm -hmm. be, their attention should not be diverted by politicians mm -hmm. who are looking for their personal interests. I would like to know ArcDeck's uh, contribution when it comes to the Building Bridges Initiative. And last time I, I did not have time for a call to action. So can you guys please do that as you're, as you're closing this for us? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, mm -hmm. I really appreciate that the Building Bridges is going to every corner of this country. Yes. With a bigger picture of, you know, whatever comes after the referendum. Mm -hmm. Whether it was informed by the handshake or not, mm -hmm. I feel like this is a good process when mm -hmm. we are bringing together, you know, the public and the youth to play the roles. Mm -hmm. I just would like to urge, number one, that can we please utilize the existing, um, you know, platforms mm -hmm. of the youth. For example, ACDEC has like membership. Mm -hmm. It's actually a region. I mean, an African platform. But the Kenyan yes. chapter would really like to add value to the whole process. Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that such organized, organ you know, youth organizations, youth factions are actually represented sanely mm -hmm. in contributing to this? Mm -hmm. So that then, one, it's good to contribute. But just as Mbuki mentioned, mm -hmm. how do we then also ensure that there is accountability mm -hmm. when we're actually bringing up whatever comes or whatever is built out of the mm -hmm. Building Bridges Initiative? Mm -hmm. So that we are not also just talking about so and so have to be in parliament. Let's create as many, you know, as many positions as possible. Mm -hmm. And what is the position of the youth? I feel like let's wake up mm -hmm. as young people. Mm -hmm. Let's join hands and stop thinking that we are competitors against each other. Mm -hmm. We are over 60% in this country. Yeah. We can make the changes we want. Great. But we have to join hands, bring together as many of the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know, youth organizations and youth factions. Yes. Stop thinking about, let me create my own. Mm -hmm. Let's think about, can we join hands? Use this, you know, bridge, as they call it, the Building Bridges Initiative, mm -hmm. to actually, you know, advocate for the youth agenda. Mm -hmm. And just to finalize, um, when you talk about the ACDEC and the call to action, mm. the African Charter on Democracy, Elections and Governance mm -hmm. was actually adopted way in 2007. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan chapter, you know, signed it, Kenya as a government signed it in 2008. Mm -hmm. They have not ratified it, they have Why? not committed to that. And why, 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 why is that so? I'd Let like me not to respond know. to that. I believe all of us will respond. My, my concern is that basically means mm -hmm. that we don't want to be held accountable at a regional level. Oh. And we don't want to report as a government to any other body beyond the national level, which unfortunately as a government, we control all systems in mm -hmm. Kenya. And so I'm calling upon, uh, especially the youthful, I feel like this ACDEC as a platform mm -hmm. is an opportunity for the young people mm -hmm. to be included in government. Mm -hmm. And I, feel, I, I would like to call upon like young parliamentarians we need your support in this, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the cabinet, with the goodwill of the youth, we also need your support to ensure that the African Charter on Democracy, Elections and Governance is actually ratified and signed up and committed to by the Kenyan government. Thank you. Great. All right, all right, all right. Please, can you close the house for us? We are, we are, we are supposed to wind up. Mm. Yeah, uh, I want to add on one thing. Mm -hmm. A lion in the jungle is... Uh, able to attack an elephant mm -hmm. as much as the elephant is big mm -hmm. in body size. Mm -hmm. Now, if youths we direct our eyes into position, mm -hmm. as uh, Justice Willie mm -hmm. was telling us, mm -hmm. we might not end up mm -hmm. taking up the mantle of leadership mm -hmm. because the government will also tend to go in the direction that mm -hmm. will evade us because we are, mm -hmm. our minds are set mm -hmm. to oppose wherever or whatever that they want to do mm -hmm. as the government. Mm -hmm. So in uh, what I want to add on now, uh, my, my, what my brothers have, uh, have, have said mm -hmm. is that uh, it is high time that we come together mm -hmm. and think more than above opposition. Mm -hmm as youths. Wow, think beyond the position. I like that. That's an amazing parting shot. Oh, my God. I don't know what I'm going to do because it's about time I, I wind this up. But I'm glad you guys had time to make your call to action. I'm glad that you guys made time for us today. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Yes, I'll be going to be seeing you next time. That's a must. <laughs> I like that. All right. Thank you so much, Wakilio Chek.
you know I, I know you know I cannot give you that time because you will tell us a story <laughs> so <laughs> sorry 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 all right please do not change that dial or do not touch that dial rather my name is Hilda Adidi and you've been watching youth and politics please do not go anywhere <laughs>